is via the cloud, not my computer. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. All right. Top of the twilight, Jackie. Huh? I said top of the twilight. This is Thomas. Oh, hi, Thomas. Hey. I wanted to apologize for my uh, outburst a couple weeks ago, and I, I'm very sorry that uh, I insulted the uh, group, and I apologize. Thank you so much. Okay, Thomas. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, so um, tonight we're going to kind of discuss getting rid of um, registration. Um, I think we've explained before, some of us have, have done that and, and not had um, very good success at it. Um, but we have someone with us tonight who has had some good success with it. So um, I'd like to introduce Marsha. Hello, Marsha. A and she's actually from the United States. So for those of you that often say it seems to be foreigners. <laughs> I don't mean that in any derogatory way. It's more of a dig towards us Americans. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> Seriously, I never meant anything negative or derogatory with that comment. Understood. I just find it ironic that a bunch of Americans are learning some of the best knowledge that most of us have probably stumbled across from people who were born, born to this country. It's, it, it's, I find it hilarious. But I don't give a shit. <laughs> So, Masha, are you there? Yes, I am here. Thank you. Hi, Masha. And if everyone else could mute out unless you're actually saying something, otherwise we get a lot of background noise. So I'm going to go through and and perhaps Masha can kind of explain. Um, hold on a minute, Masha. Let me make sure that everyone is muted. Hey, it's Paul here. Yeah. Trying to figure out how to mute. Yep, we got rid of that one. <laughs> got rid of Paul. Sorry, I got rid of Paul. <laughs> he left Paul hanging. He's hanging about. He just happened to be on the one I was clicking mute. So, okay, sorry, go ahead, Marsha. I'm going to mute out too. around <laughs> basically all of us. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me okay? We just did. When Jackie muted everything, you went out too. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I've been researching and looking at uh, issues of law and uh, uh, trust and lo a lot of things for a lot of years, probably close to 30 years, and have done a lot of research to try to figure out what is going on, not only with the economy, but with the, the entanglements, the knots that we've really had tied around us that keep us in the contractual obligations. And one of the, the most time consuming, in addition to internal revenue service and taxes has been matters of traffic. Uh, I've been recently taking all the files and the research that I've collected over the last 30 years and trying to filter it down into what's worth keeping and not keeping. And uh, oddly enough, I have probably about a three foot stack of papers related to traffic matters that I just had on my dining room table when Jackie called me and said, this is what we're thinking about doing. We're thinking about bonding automobile financial responsibilities and, and then she gave me an idea of the process. And um, it just so happens that I've tried that and that I have literally uh, sent to the state of California a, a bond to cover uh, financial responsibility for traffic based on or stacked on top of a, a birth certificate bond that I have filed or d deposited with the United States Treasury. So the state of California accepts it. They send it to from their VIP department back to me saying thank you. And they uh, understand that I have the, uh, the bond uh, to cover my financial responsibility. So they accept that at that level. It does work. It is <coughs> making a claim against that. Now understand that when you bond and you step in as the uh, indemnitor, you're literally stepping into the position that an insurance company would would have. So you're fully responsible and the, the, the knowledge of how to execute a claim against that bond uh, is what I'm still working with. 
I do have claims against some bonds that I have out for traffic matters. And, um, and because we, one of the things that we've got to understand when we're stepping into subrogation, we're stepping into both sides. We're getting the benefit of not having to go to the corporate insurers and become the subject of the corporate insurance mechanism. But we also have to be able to execute claims against the bond. We can't take one side of the coin without taking the other side of the coin. And the, the real trick on the claims is, is on the bond that says, yes, the Treasury, where they've got a fiduciary obligation to perform. But there's no guarantee we can get the, the treasury to perform against the bonds when a claim is made. So I think that that's something in the context of what you're doing that really needs to be taken into consideration about stepping out into a position of subrogation. We're not only getting the benefit of not having to go and pay the corporate insurers and, be, and put another contractual layer on our slave state, but we also ha have to understand that it we can't we can't speak for who's going to honorably discharge these bonds when claims are made. We can't just not take the claim side. The other side of that is when we have an automobile that has a registration and the state has the registration on the automobile, just like with when they have the birth certificate on your your estate, that estate, that birth certificate is bonding the state's action. So the, since the, the car is titled to the state, they're holding the title instrument and giving you possession and use of the, the asset, we have to honor that the insurance literally is, is we already are subrogating to the state's liability because it's their asset. So we, when we're getting an insurance policy, that insurance company is stepping into a subrogation position. It's limiting the liability that you would have for your actions on the highway. And, and it's insuring the state. So what we really have to address on both sides of the issue is not only just bonding the asset, but taking the asset into our private property instead of having the title sitting with the state. So here's what I did. I, I you know, I, I'm not recommending that you do or don't this, don't do this. I, I recommend that you think about this, that you research this, that you think about it for yourself, because it, it you have to understand what you're doing in all of this, and it's it's a typically a much bigger picture than we see on the surface. When I acquired a, a, a vessel to uh, transport myself on the, the highways, I took the title application for the state, and this is the state of California. Up at the top, it says application for title or registration. <clears throat> so I modified the instrument that they're asking for the, the title transfer. I crossed off application, I put notice for title, and then I crossed off or registration because I wasn't going to give them the opportunity to interpret it as a registration. I'm not registering it. Under the rules of commerce, notice is everything. <clears throat> and I also had a renewal notice on the license that was that was attached to this conveyance so i sent the money that they wanted for the renewal and i sent the the application with the information in it for title transfer modifying it a way that i would give them notice on the title and on the registration both front and back I wrote diagonally in red across the front of the instrument, special private property on both the title, on the front and on the back, on the front and back, uh, of the, but there were two pages of the quote application, which I turned into a notice. I wrote that across the application and I sent it in as special private property, noticing them 
that I am taking it into private property and they had no longer have any interest in the title. That was a year ago. They wrote back to me because I had made a mistake uh, on the, the title document, the certi certificate of title that I dated and initialed when I made, when I crossed it out. So they sent me a notice back that said, why did, you know, why is this changed? And I said, well, because I, I had, was confused in my thinking on where the title was actually going to go. It should be this way. And so I sent their explanation back. That was in January of 2016. I have not got, gotten from them a request for insurance, a renewal application, a notice of suspension, or any documentation, even though I have repeatedly received information from them and uh, mailings from them at the location that they know where from to connect, connect with me. So in the year that I have been traveling with this, I have not had a problem. And they are noticed, they kept the money, they kept the notice, they know that it's in private property, and they're not sending me any of their, their um, administrative obligations for those vehicles that are registered to them. So we have to not only think about having the private responsibility and the ability to pay on any claims to show that we're 100% we're responsible for our financial obligations and our responsibilities on the highway, but we have to remove the necessity to insure the state for their asset. So that's, that was, Jackie asked me to, uh, to relay that information to you. May I? Yes, please. You're basically indemnifying the state from any liability for your actions uh, and your conveyance, is that correct? That's right. That's, when your car or uh, your conveyance is titled to the state, and they allow you to use it, they have the liability and the obligation. So your insurance literally is covering their liability for your well, use. Basically, it's almost like two-factor authentication. You've got the state indemnified, and of course you get an insurance co company to come in, and thus they subrogate it, uh, all the, well, the majority of the rights to them to act on your behalf uh, as a um, insurer, uh, and you're the insuree. So now exactly. in, in this, in this um, process, was anything mentioned to them that in the event of anything that happens, you're going to exercise your right of subrogation or was that not even an issue? No, all I did was send in the, the title, the, the certificate of title, the, the form that they need to see for title transfer, and I sent no cover letter, nothing else with it, just like they would expect to see, the bureaucrats would expect to see it, except that I read across the front of it in diagonal letters, it said special private property. And at the top, I crossed out anything that implied or any language in the form that implied I was, ex I was giving them title. You modify the document to your use. Absolutely. It's okay. notice I was giving them, not an application. All right. Well, thank you, Marcia. Nice to yeah, hear your welcome. voice, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> let me answer. Uh, let me say something. The question yes. I have is if um, it's being subrogated, where is the subrogation coming from? It comes from the estate which is the Sister Cave I Trust that's being held at the TDC. Well, it actually comes from your application for insurance because but, when you apply for the insurance, it, it ultimately, yes, it does come from the estate because any application is monetized. When you give your, your name and your social security number, you have issued a financial instrument that then gets a QCIP number and is monetized to the company for whom you're applying. But now, the point of it is it shouldn't come out of our pocket, per go se. Go ahead. It's, right. That's that point. And it's what, that's, I think, what everybody's question is. It shouldn't be coming out of our pocket. It comes out of the, 
the trust that was already set up for us because it, it comes off both sides. It comes out of both sides if you apply for their uh, limited liability. They're, they're not only limiting, they're not only providing the subrogation for the state's responsibility, but they're limiting your liability based on the policy that you get from them. So they have some agreed premium amount for you to pay for this benefit that you're getting of this policy of insurance and you're paying to indemnify, indemnify the state so that the state doesn't have to pay for your accidents. Well, another way of doing that would be through a hold harmless, right? I mean, um, a few times when I've given a hold harmless, that has been sufficient instead of using the indemnification. Well, I do have bonds and I do have indemnification on the private side, but I'm not required to disclose those into the public so long as I'm only holding private property. When, and I have, yeah. when okay. the title is with the state, I'm holding public property. Oh, okay. So to make it clear, okay. So as long as it's removed, if it's removed from the state, we could continue with it with the subrogation bond. Is that what you're saying? Right. And it's all private. As long as it's, it, yeah, exactly. Okay. The, the, that's the, the idea. Say it again. It, that's the idea. It should only be for people that do not have driver's licenses and are not registered basically. Right. Even when you send in the, uh, the indemnity bond, the private indemnity bond to the state of California to indemnify, to, to demonstrate your financial responsibility, it goes to a different office. It's yeah. called the VIP division. Yeah, we, we deal with them all the time. So, I mean, you know, Ken's had his since 2004. We've been doing them um, this way since 2012 we just didn't you know okay so one of the issues that we had was someone trying to make a claim on it and that did cause an issue um so ken was a surety on somebody's bond and um and well the court case there too. was a court case too. Yeah. yeah it came up in an IRS court case yeah it came up in a case so. And, and that is that is one of the the difficulties of stepping into subrogate because you're literally providing and saying that you're going to limit somebody else's liability so you if when the liability arises you have to be able to perform to to pay that liability if you say you're stepping in to assume it so that the 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 closing of that and and I'm I'm ah. looking forward to seeing how the Fed Reserve and the Treasury acts with all these changes that are going on and if we actually can get somebody honorable to account for these uh, indemnifications and pay the claims as they're made. That's the final loop. Because ultimately the way I was looking at it is members of IDP if that's the way we do it but those members um, technically they, they all have birth certificates, but they would be kept in the private. That's the whole idea. You, you know, not having those at the treasury, <coughs> it would be a private holding, not one that we've made so public as before. Yeah. And, and the, 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 the real, because we're all uh, uh, collapsed in the distinction of public think, the real challenge is for us to, uh, to really understand we're fully responsible and liable when we place these bonds and we have to be able to perform on a liability when it occurs. It's not limited liability. This is full commercial liability. Exactly. 100% responsible. Absolutely. Um, does anybody have any questions in regards to either the registration or removing? I do. Okay, let me just ask this quick question. So, Marsha, have you gone onto the DMV website and checked to make sure that nothing's coming up? Because it's not quite a year yet. Um, so, I'm kind of apprehensive on thinking of that that's been successful when there could be a number of things that could have happened, but there is a way of checking it on the DMV website. Like you put in the last five numbers of the VIN and it will tell you um, what, the what the status is. No, I haven't. 
I haven't done that. And um, it, the registration is due, f if it were a, a, a state registered, it would be due this month. And I would have expected to see a renewal notice um, last when, month or the month exactly. before. Yeah, you should have got it, yeah last yeah. month at least. So No, but I haven't. That's a good point. And um, uh, that may be a point of curiosity to check that. <laughs> yeah. Then you wonder if you're opening out mm -hmm. per Pandora's box. Okay. So, sorry, somebody had a question. May I? I did. Well, yes, yeah. I said I did. Yes, go ahead. I wanted to just say, hi, I would, wanted to say this is amazing because I've been into this for so, so long, but with uh, family members who have needed caregiving. And I would love to ask anyone, Marsha or Jackie, to call me at 949-878-7100. If you'd like me to write up whatever it is you all know the process is, put it in order, you know, have it verified by you and write it up so we could actually make you know, booklets or whatever materials so that people can truly have it at their fingertips. And it's actually a complete list, giving them also the comprehension of what we rec need to recognize each particular step along the way and what needs to be done before this is even occurring, like you mentioned, Jackie, with not having a driver's license, what ID do you need, etc. I'm very, very happy to do this. I just need someone to be willing to work with me and I'd be happy to do it. And I will be doing it myself, taking the steps, and then rewrite it again. I've written over probably 100 SOPs for different uh, businesses and people around the world. So I'm very used to this. And I would, my name is Roxy, by the way. So anyone that would like to, Marsha and Jackie and anybody that has any info, I can take all the info and put it together. You know, you could, you could either send it to me in email and I can go over it with you after I've rewritten it as I understand it and go through the process myself. So that's what I'm interested to do is to make sure that all of this great information gets out to everybody that wants to do it in a way that we can actually start immediately, the first step, second step, and we can actually all go through it. The more of us that are in private status, the better off we will all be. Blessings to everybody here, by the way. You all are absolutely amazing. <laughs> Thank you. So, you know, if I, if, I enthusiasm in your voice. <laughs> if I understand what? the process correctly, if there's any chance in, and this is maybe pie in the sky, but if there's any chance in hell of remanning the old republic, it's going to have to be done by people who are in the private. If there's not enough of us <laughs> yes. to actually make Absolutely. it happen, then Absolutely. It's, all, it's all a moot point. You can't man the old republic while you're stuck in this system. So anyway, mm -hmm. side note. I've got a question. Who's this, that? I have, this is Ron. Hi, Ron. Hi. When you, re, when you do the complete removal, are you still required to get your car smog? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I no. Have, I've not got a car <laughs> smogged. I don't know. I haven't it's been like five or six years. I think it's longer than that. Yeah. I can't remember. I, the, I think the only smug I ever did, I actually paid extra for. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I've ever really been to a real smog station. <laughs> but no, no, you don't, Ron. No. So. Can I come in? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, uh, it's, it's my understanding, if I may, it's my understanding that in the private. Uh, that that you, there's no requirement to meet the obligations of public asset. Absolutely. And, um, Beautifully. Yes. When, there are times when I've been stopped and they ask me why I didn't do something or why I don't have something done. And I simply tell them because I have not received notice that I'm required to do that. Okay. Um, I think Ian has his hand raised. Thank okay. you, thank you. Um, uh, just, just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was just going to say, I was just. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Wait. Okay. All right. New webcam, new webcam. Um, <clears throat> I was going to say to Roxy, uh, me and Jackie had spoken about um, taking a lot of a, uh, you know, taking this approach for the Scot, uh, taking the in power um, document into the into the Scottish uh, judiciary. And I was wondering if that would interest you, if perhaps if you were interested in being paid to do the paperwork to, to maybe assist us to do that. Uh, I'm not saying that Jackie's agreed to that, but I'm saying that I, I certainly have. Uh, but uh, I was just wondering if that's something, Roxy, that you'd be interested in. And I'd like to share something else after that. 
Um, hold on a minute. Roxy. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yes, hi. I'd be happy, Ian, to speak with you about that and get more clarity. I'm not exactly sure what you're asking, but I'm happy to help whatever can move us forward to all of us being private, all of us being making a republic. I'm ready. Um, okay. 949-878-7100. Just call me, leave I'll your name you and number, and let's get specifics. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, okay, Roxy, but what I am specifically asking for, I think, is, is for you, me, a couple other people, hopefully, is to is to look at, and I, I know it sounds like um, uh, beyond your remit, but, but um, to look at the Scottish judicial system and start to actually translate the, the empower um, document to the system. And I think there's a very prolific reason for doing it in Scotland or, or taking it through. Well, I'm very happy to speak to you about this in private so we don't take everybody's time because no I'm, sometimes I have a hard time recognizing what word you're using with your <coughs> accent. Apologies to, to you, I but uh, I actually, she was, she I actually have Scottish accent. ancestry. <laughs> and I'm very happy to go over specifics with you and see what how I can help. I'm very happy to do that. Empower okay. has a problem too with the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I have another thing to bring up. There's yes, go, uh, go it ahead. Seems go ahead. Separate, it seems separate to what you're talking about with the vehicles, but I actually think it's very, very much connected. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's in Scotland, I don't think is, 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 is disassociated. Okay, so as Jackie, as you know, I had an incident that I was long expecting with uh, uh, the animal health uh, department, the government department today. I have a farm, a small farm, uh, an organic farm, and uh, they had, I had particularly, and this is the point related to the car, um, I had purposely not registered my uh, cattle when I moved them about a year ago. I had Highland cows and, and I moved them. So um, they had phoned me up uh, on maybe three or four occasions saying, look, if you don't register them, we're going to, the, the sun's going to fall in, the moon's going to chew you up, and, uh, and, and we're going to eat your children. And uh, or words to that effect. <laughs> and uh, basically I said, well, go fuck yourself. And uh, they said, they said, well, you know, excuse the French. Uh, they said, well, um, we're going to deal with you. And I said, well, come ahead. I, what happened today was I had animal health up here, trading standards, the police, uh, and they were quite mob-handed, the police. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, I had a warrant out for me for non-payment of a fine that I was in court for, so I couldn't be here. So what happened was um, the, the, the departments came up. Uh, my, my friend gave them the, the legal argument or the lawful argument, which was, look, had my wife... Uh, I, I, one thing I think the Amer American audience should, should know is that everybody in Britain, rich or poor, all receive um, child tax credit. Whether, you've got, whether you want to or not. And so what that does, and this is why I'm bringing this up, what that does is that makes you a contract with the, with, with this, with, with the government or, or, or the system, uh, and you receive a right or benefit from the system. And if you receive a right or benefit from the system uh, in a Commonwealth com country, you're, you're, you're by default contracting with, that, with their authority. So my, my, I had a few arguments, but one of my main, my main argument was, um, I'm not, uh, I, I don't receive any rights or benefits uh, from the system. Uh, and, and not only that, uh, I, I have the absolute right to privacy and property under common law, and I'm not a free man on the land. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and basically, the, 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 I, I chose not, which is what caused this problem, I chose not to register my animals, and this goes down to the car analogy, I chose not to register my animals with the, with the uh, with the department, and therefore th their statute, which gives them no warrant, uh, unbelievable powers, unbelievable powers to come into my property and do what the, f the hell they want. Um, uh, my, my argument was they have no jurisdiction over me. Had my wife um, uh, owned the animals, she, they may have had jurisdiction or not. I think because about five or six years ago, because uh, we have now stopped the child tax credit, uh, or whatever the hell it's called, child benefit, um, uh, she, she did a few years ago. But what I'm saying is I've never, ever received uh, state benefit. And, 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 you know, 
I've given my last, uh, I've given my birth certificate back to the, back to the court. My point is, uh, the, the, when they came up today, they didn't have any clue whatsoever between the differences in jurisdiction. Their argument was, we have the power, and it's in the public great, the greater good. Uh, it's, in, it's, uh, it's for the it's for the greater good. Uh, where the powers are under the statute, and we have the power to come and do what we want. The bottom line was that we held them at the gate, and um, we, we, we 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 were forced. I was on the end of the phone the whole time, almost. Uh, my friend, who was very very new to this, but a very very intelligent guy, I'm very excited to get him into, involved in this, and so is he. Uh, his name is Jackie. He's Adrian McCallan. He's one of my friends, uh, and he's on your group. Um, he he held them at the gate, and they even said, "Look, you're going to be charged with obstruction and arrested. Um, are you going to let us in the gate because it was locked?" And and he came on the phone to me. I told him, "It's your call, Adrian. It's up to you. I can't tell you what to do." He came back. He said, "No, you're not getting in." And they they backtracked and and went down. You know, and but what this is what happened. This is what happened. And this is concerning, because because the police, the police that made this happen is a local Bobby that I have a good relationship with. He told me tonight on the phone. He said, when he phoned after it, he went, "How do you think that went?" And I went, "Not great." And they, and he went, "Well, why?" And I said, "Well, I appreciate what you did, because you defused the situation, as far as I understand." But what they did was they had a separation, uh, and uh, and and when I spoke to this policeman that I know pretty well. Even he was on my side, and even he said, I thank you for doing what you're doing. My argument was that the, that the state and civil departments cannot have, I will not allow them to have more powers than the police who need a warrant. And that's my main argument. Um, I, I totally agree with the greater good for the animal health. I offered them, I offered them to get any, any blood tests that they were coming on the farm to do today. I offered to do that at my own expense, even though it was fu- free with this department at my own expense with a vet. But one thing I I'd adhere to was they are not getting, no one is getting on my land without a warrant or an invitation. So, I, 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 and that's my stance more than anything else. So when he phoned me tonight, he said to me, look, I totally get what you're doing. I admire what you're doing. I don't fully understand if I'm being honest, but he said, what happened was they went into a huddle when Adrian came back and said at the last, at the last point, um, you know where he was threatened with arrest, and he and he 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 stood up to them, uh, and I've got to admire him for that. Uh, at the very last minute, they went into a huddle away from Adrian, and the reason that they came back and sort of never came on the field was um, uh, w- 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 the depart the council department, the government department had phoned their boss and asked how to deal with this. Their boss said, "Get in, Stormin, Stormin." And do what you have to do. And the local police said no. Now the guy that the guy that that, that, that was the authority in, in the government was an ex-superintendent of the police, and they knew the the local the local policeman knew him personally. And he told me this on the phone tonight. He said, "Look, we overrode it because of the relationship and the greater good and the long-term thing." My point being, my long-winded point being, is that. Um, the government departments have no clue about jurisdiction, none. Uh, the government departments think they're the they're, they're Superman or Iron Man in a cape when the authorities Ian? actually say this. The only way to Ian? get back at this, Ian. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just finished. The only way to get back at this is with a liability order so uh, uh, or, or document. So I'm hoping Ian? that you maybe guys you, can, Ian, you, maybe you could make this a topic for another call. It's it's a long time you're taking, and it's not on topic, right? Don't we want to stay on topic? Well, I thought it was. I thought it was. Otherwise, this call could be, it could be, well, it doesn't sound like it to me. It, Jackie will make the determination, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's registration. It relates to registration. It does. And, and- I, I yeah. think it's I think it's an in, interesting concept, and and you know what, Marsha, uh, remember the notice of um, th- what was the old notice? Notice of waiver of tort. Yes, but I, I'm thinking here in terms of the liability. So so what I thought was a was a really good idea for for Ian was to have 
I, I'm looking at this as being a liability issue. The state is worried that those his cows that are not are not vaccinated are somehow going to make other other cows in the area um, sick or whatever. It's the same with the schools, right? With children, <laughs> that's their primary thing. So we're looking at a a liability issue. So I see this as needing a waiver. Basically, it needs to have um, a hold harmless and perhaps um, some sort of liability or, or some sort of bond. Well, you yes, you're talking some sort of indemnification yeah. so that they see that the if there's any damage, that the damage has the ability to be covered. Exactly. Can I just say one last sentence and that's me done. Go my ahead. Whole point, uh, my whole point, Roxby, was um, that I think that this is more than an American problem, more than a Scottish problem. Absolutely. And, and, and I, I also think that the, the ultimate solution to registration, whether it be a cow, a child, yep. uh, or, or, or a car, uh, and I've got experience with not registering child children, and, and, yep. and, and, and the force that came behind that, um, is, is that it comes down to the in-power liability thing. So uh, I'm surprised that you shut me down, Roxy, because one of the things I would have spoke to you about was is developing that empower document um, as, a, as a guinea pig, actually, to use in the Scottish courts. Again, the car, the cow, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same it's, thing. It's property. It's, it's property. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's property. It's property that comes under a certificate of title. Okay. And, okay. Yeah, and so it's the same, whether it's our kids, our car, our, you know. That's right. I certainly, wouldn't have brought my own I, I certainly wouldn't have brought my own personal story up today in such a long-winded way as I did. If I didn't feel it was relevant. Well, congratulations, I, by the way, at keeping them off the property. You did good. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic, Ian. I guess I should interject then, Ian. This is Roxy. I am really focused to try to get as many people into private status, beginning with me and writing it all up so everybody can have the information. And that is my goal. So when it's something off of that track, that has to be my first thing, because I really believe we have to get as many people private status. <laughs> So I believe this not registering, you know, knowing how to get your car to registration is one of the many steps that needs to be done. And that's well, why I'd love for Marsha to call I, me and I, anybody I, else. Well, I, I disagree, think, but my whole argument was about that very point about yes. private registration. I hope you're not making a, 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 a and I'm sure you're not, um, the differential between it being in Scotland, private registration discussion and, and America. Because the whole point is the Commonwealth has different little systems that are all, yes. uh, that are all, you know, dif uh, different. Well, I believe the whole, yeah, I believe the whole world needs to be changed. The problem that I'm having is until I'm a private status, I'm really not of much use for anybody and neither okay. is anybody else. Okay, so but my goal is to get all of us private status. And if I'm not focused on that, because I have a daughter in the hospital whose life I'm trying to save, okay. I'm, I'm really striving to put every single moment second of my life to get to private status and share with everybody that wants to be and then let's move on and I'm happy to help you then after that Roxy, but I have I'm, to get myself and my daughter so I can get her clear Roxy, she has I'm, been attacked way too many times I'm really glad you I'm really glad you brought that up sorry Jackie just one point to Roxy yeah. the whole point of me bringing this whole bloody thing up is that I'm trying to say to you and what you've just said about your personal situation is I do believe that the in power document is your route, your quickest route to getting that private status. That's my whole point. Thank you. So let, let's just point out about this. It doesn't, anything that comes under a certificate of title, and I don't care what country it's in, it's all the same shit. So um, it, it, it all applies. Whether, whether you're deregistering a car, deregistering a cow, deregistering yes. your child, yep. deregistering yourself, it's registration and it comes under a certificate of title. So... Um, it's all relevant. And if one person has done it for one aspect, then we can take that, that success and apply it to other things. And I think right here, Ian, actually you've shown some success there. So you refuse to, to register them and ultimately you don't have a contract with them, which is exactly where we're at. If you don't have that contract, there's no nexus and there's no, there's no you know. But they, they think no I do. Yeah. They still think I do. The only thing that stopped them smashing me today 
well, or, or coming on my land was, was the, the local police that stood, that stood, that actually stood in, you know, to stop it. And, and, and I think that's the same, pro the same problem that's in the States and Australia and Canada. Um, it's, you know, it, it's well, not resolved. And I think the only thing that can resolve it, and this is what I said to the police, and I'm, Roxy, this is for your benefit, is, is that I said, now, I'm delighted that they came up and showed me loss and harm. Uh, and I almost, I even said to Adrian, I wish they'd had, I wish they'd actually smashed their way onto the field, because then I'd have, I have an even stronger point under the liability order that the Empower doc. I've got nothing to do with the Empower team, as, as Jackie will testify to. But I'm telling you, this is the only. I've been involved in the so-called free man on the land, a, a so-called, for over 12, 13 years. I've never ever seen a document. I've never seen a solution like this. Never. And this is our route to the private to the private realm. It's our absolute route because I'm going to hold this woman liable, the trading standards liable, their boss liable, and all the way up the chain to whoever created or agreed with this statute in Parliament, MPs. And look, if the Empower document can get the the executive director to resign the day that he was issued the liability order of the IMF, sorry, of the IMF then it's something that's worth pursuing. Agreed. Let, let, me, let me say some things here, because I think what, um, what's um, going on is... Mike, 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 there's somebody that had their hand raised. Actually, there's two people that had How do you do that? Hand. Can I put my foot up? <laughs> if no. I, only if you put your, <laughs> your video on so I can see it. Thomas <laughs> has his hand raised, and he's had it raised for quite okay. a while. Go so, for it. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thomas. <laughs> Hello, Thomas. Oh, I, had, I had to un unmute my microphone. I thought you had to unmute it. Um, again, going back about 14 minutes in the conversation when, uh, when Ma was talking about the, uh, the issue at hand there, which uh, I understand the other man's issue is also the same parallels. Marsha, what do you have on the, on the, on the car in regards to plates do you have the society sojourner plates from curtis or what do you have on there anything i have i left the plate on there that they have as the identifier i've just taken the the uh, little stickers off the top and uh because that's how it's identified to them as private property I uh, am looking at, I've been thinking about, and of course haven't done it yet, but uh, taking and then just putting the UCC1 um, uh, uh, showing that it's collateral of, of mine as private property so that I have it both noticed to the DMV UCC1 financing statement. It held, as, held by a security agreement. Exactly. Okay. The other thing of it was is that on the forms, on the forms that were used, like the the identity theft uh, document, the one four zero three nine, all these documents. Um, well, one of the things is that these documents are copyrighted, and the fact of the matter is, is they've now copyrighted these statues, and in doing so, that's increasing the revenue stream. Um, this is from Ken's site. He just put this up a little bit ago. Ken Dost. Ownership of copyrights can be transferred either by operation of law or by a written instrument, period. 17 U.S.C. Section 204A, 2000. Courts have interpreted transfer by operation of law to mean transfer by bequest, bankruptcy, mortgage, foreclosures, and the like. Taylor Court versus Four Seasons Greeting, LLC. Eighth Circuit Court, 2005. As a matter of law, authors and owners of copyright immediately possess. As a matter of law, authors and owners of copyright immediately possess the exclusive rights to reproduce, distribute, perform, and display copyrighted works, and to prepare derivative works based upon them. The Computer Software Copyright Act of 1980 amended as a Copyright Act of 1976 to include computer programs. Copyright protection does not end with the original work, rather continues in derivatives works. So every time that they have an application that you sign, they're gonna go ahead and do a digital copy on that, and that 
form is copyrighted. So they're now putting you into a whole nother stream of, of stuff that is, is way beyond the registration and the entitlement of the ownership of the property and the operation and use of that property. So that, that, that's what I, I wanted to share. So um, thank you for allowing me to speak. All right, thanks. I, I yield the floor. Okay, Joe. Joe has his hand raised and I've just unmuted. Uh, yes, there you go. Okay, Joe. Okay. Um, this is a little bit, um, I, bought a, I bought a car about two years ago and I drove the road with a transfer plate over for a bit. I was about got, got the car paid off to 2013. I've got the original build title. I've never, uh, I don't have a plate or nothing on it right now. I was carrying comp occlusion because the bank's holding the note on it. And you know, I've never turned the title in. It's the original bill from General Motors. Can you, can you understand me? Not very well. Can you hear me? I, I can kind of hear it's a little bit muffled. I think that you're asking about transferring car a car when it has a loan on it. Well, I've got the title. I've never turned the title in. Uh, and the insurance company put me on comp and collision for a bit. And then they just recently, uh, a few months ago, forced me to pay liability comp collision, said they couldn't pay no liability. Anyway, um, I got a question about the insurance and the title. And I'm just wondering, you know, I'm kind of hoping to get it paid off this next year, but um, to get the bank out of it. And I'm wondering what I should do with this title because I've got the original build title, not. The state doesn't have any access to it right now. And so what's the question? Well, I'm wondering what, what should I do with the title? Whose name? That I've got from General Motors. Whose name's on the, your name's on the title? Uh, I believe it's handwritten on there because it's never been turned in to the DMV, okay? You understand what I'm saying? Not, no. Not really, no. And you, you, you're statement was very muffled it's very hard to understand i bought a new car three years ago okay the dealership gave me the title on it okay i have yet to turn the title into the dmv okay but i got the okay. car paid off i've got other stuff i'm going to the mso yes the, the original build title deal from general motors that's the MSO. Oh, the, MSO. the MSO or MCO is what is needed when you buy a car outright to make it your own. Yeah, you own it then. You, you own it, yeah. Because I just want to make sure that there's a clear and distinct difference between a title and an MSO or MCO. Yeah. Very, very clear, distinct difference. Well, I, I still owe 6500 to the bank, but still, I'm just about there. You know, it was 18000 to start with, so... Um, Oh. Well, you can only get an MCO or an MSO if it, if you pay all in cash at the moment you purchase the vehicle. Otherwise, no. then you're given not a title. Always. Yeah, not always. I mean, we know someone who's oh, got that's, who's been sent there. Oh, that's phenomenal. Yes. I'd like to hear about that. Um, wow. well, it doesn't say it doesn't say any state. It says General Motors at the top of it. It's a green, you know, official document. But it's got General Motors Corporation or something at the top of it. Well, that's really why I asked, that. because that sounds like an MSO. It sounds like it's, the MSO. The MSO so is a bond. Okay. So I'm just yeah. wanting to turn it into the DMV. What should I do with it? That's my question. Go ahead, Marsha. No, don't give it to the DMV. If, yeah. if I, in my hand, I can only tell you what I would do if I had that in my hand. I would get a UCC1 financing statement and I would look at that document and I would list all the numbers as collateral and I would put it on a financing statement at the Secretary of State. And I would carry uh, the, the the financing state with me so if I was questioned as to the registration, I could show that I have the manufacturer statement of origin and it's no duly noticed. Does that answer your question, Joe? Okay. I definitely would not give it to the DMV. So right, you hold the original manufacturer statement of origin and not. notice it through the UCC one to the world that it's special private property. Yes. May I, real quick? Well, Go I ahead. had some. May I finish? 
uh, I've had somebody point out that you need to, I need to fill out. I haven't got done my UCC one, and somebody said that I needed to do a UCC three also. Can I get a comment on the UCC three form? Yeah, that's UCC, just, yeah. Go the ahead. UCC is transferring interest in a in a filed UCC one. If there's a change in collateral or there's some change in parties, it's an amendment to an already filed UCC one. So it is a it is a different form, and I don't know why you would use a UCC three in this instance, unless you were giving somebody okay. else. I think, well, well, hold on, because it could be an amendment or an assignment, but in his case, if he already has a one filed, he's adding collateral to his one. Understood. You don't need to file a new one. Yeah, you won't need to file a new one. You would file a UCC3 if you already have a one on file. Does that make sense? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, right. Um, are we going to be able to, it's a little bit off subject, but are we going to be able to get our birth certificates taken care of down there in Puerto Rico because of all that storm damage? It's still a certificate of, of registration. I, yeah. <laughs> we don't do that. No. Uh, you know, once, once, we what do you mean, with, once we deal with registration, you don't claim the birth certificate? It's, it's a, ben a certificate of beneficial interest in a public estate. And when you know how to use it, you are Trump. May I? Go ahead, Thomas. <laughs> Having done three automobiles uh, utilizing the um, uh, transaction where the manufacturer statement of origin was provided the buyer at the, at the close of escrow of the automobile, the, one of the issues that happened was we had to provide a private notary at the dealership to go ahead and notarize the back of that document showing their release of the rights, title, and interest as assigned by the, the manufacturer, General Motors, to the dealership. So the dealership had to transfer it and it had to be done by a notary. I did two BMW 750 ILs and a Lexus 400. And those, those steps were done each time. And then uh, on one occasion, the car was delivered to the lot, but they had to wait three days for the manufacturer's statement of origin to be delivered before anyone could travel in the automobile. I will yield. Thank you so much. Okay. Bob, you have your hand up. Um, yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. I'm new to the group. I've messaged you a couple of times on Facebook, <clears throat> but I have a friend on the phone. I see his number on the board. Um, I don't know. Are the guys, the guys that are on the phone, are they allowed to ask a question? Yeah, they can ask a question. What do they do, push star six or something? Um, actually, they should be able to unmute. Oh. Unless it's Paul. Unless, uh, you're not talking about Paul, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about Idiote. He's in Colorado. Uh, okay, what's his first three numbers? And I'll unmute him. 719. Okay, got it. Okay, go ahead. Are you muted? 719. Oh yeah, I don't have a I don't have a question right now, but I I'll, I'll get with you. All right then. Okay. Any oh, okay, um, Bob, do, uh, do you have another question, Bob? Nothing. Um, anybody else? Okay, let's have a look down the chat. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Mike, BLT. Where's BLT? Wait, I, excuse me, can you hear me now? Oh, yeah, okay, I can hear you now. Yes, go ahead. Um, his question would have been, he's been asking me to get a hold of you for a week. And anyways, um, you have looked up a, the code or statute or regulation or whatever it is in California saying that we don't have to have our car um, registered or you, you have an actual code that you looked up and then I guess... You looked up the code for Colorado also that corresponds with the California codes you were talking about? Am I, um, I, I have not looked up Colorado, but it, it probably does correlate to the same. They're pretty much all the same. You just have to be able to find 
that one in your state. And I think you're talking about 260B, what would be 260B here, where it basically says um, that ours is a passenger car, although I, I, I wouldn't claim that myself, but it just shows you within that statute that there are certain cars required to be registered and other ones that are not. All right. And you guys can't see me on video, huh? How do you get the video to work? Um, there's a there's a little camera on the bottom left of your screen, and it yours probably has a red X, a red line through it. You have to yeah. have that red line. Oh, I see. Okay, BLT. There you are. Now we can see you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, uh, I want to go back to the subrogation thing because there's different avenues of the subrogational concern that are not clear in most people's minds, including mine. And um, part, a couple of uh, foundational items in there is the understanding, according to um, in, uh, Congressional Documents 43, under S Senate Document 73, that says, all property is and belongs to the United States. That's, the, that's our first problem, number one, because we're trying to claim stuff you can't claim. So this goes back to the subject that Jackie and I have been working on for a while, which is the, our, uh, our notice of, of a claim, uh, making them, uh, through our, our notice for a liability, uh, be re liable for not answering our questions, okay? And one of those things, is it true? that all property belongs to the United States. Because if it does, why in the hell do we have to license, or why the hell do we have to pay taxes on it for rents, one thing. But back to the subrogation point, <clears throat> um, the, when, if you get in trouble, for some reason or another, you get a summons, you, uh, 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 part of the subrogation story is, is that the prosecuting attorney or the uh, district attorney or the, whoever's making the uh, claim against you is required to file a bond. There's the first bond. They're the guarantors, okay? Now the question is, if they're the ones guaranteeing the bond, then that means they're the ones who are putting their head on the block, not you. And the other thing is, is that being that we have no real ways to pay debt, we can't pay debt with debt. So there's a big fraud going on in the middle of all this stuff. And so if we're going to, file ourselves a bond of some type uh, to indemnify ourselves, what are we supposed to pay that bond with? The point of it is, it comes out of the estate. The estate is the all cap name and until you've segregated yourself as the living man from that estate and you are the executor of it, you're not the responsible party, you're only the one who has to be the manager to direct who has to pay, which the, which the uh, estate essentially is the principal because that's where all the funds are held. That's what was created with the Sustake Vi Act and creating the trust in the treasury direct account that's already there for us. And that's where any money should come out of it, which creates the bond, not out of our pocket, in part or in whole, in any capacity. So until we really understand clearly where this money is gonna come from to pay for insurance or any, any kind of liability, we have to resolve that clarity uh, so that we know that this is the reason we're doing this, is the fact that we have no abilities to pay anything. All the property belongs to the state, not to us. And that includes, there's another thing in the United States Code, and it says that all debt is the responsibility of the United States. Not us. So the point of it is there, where is all that uh, taken care of? And as you notice, the, the, what, what's the latest uh, debt? $22 trillion. They don't even have any idea what's, what it even means. It's, it's, it's an absurdity. So this, sub, this idea of subrogation and us posting a bond has to be directed towards that account because that name, that all capital name, they don't call it capitalism for nothing because we capitalize the name. And when we capitalize the name, we're basically saying uh, those are slaves. That's what the capitalization is. That's what capitalism is, slavery. And we've been in it since the beginning of time. And I don't think it's going to change real soon. So the point of it is, is pulling ourselves out of that role of being the surety and let the principal, which is the, uh, the all cap name, be the one that, uh, be where the funds come to, to take care of those problems. Because they can't come out of us, because 
labor is finite. It's an impossibility to pay some of these debts they create. Absolutely impossible. So that's the thing I'm trying to get at is, is we have to be really, really clear where uh, this idea of subrogation really is and who's indemnifying who for what, because there's nothing to indemnify anybody from anything. There's no money. And of course, if we get arguments from the liberals left and right about, oh, that's bullshit. I can buy anything I want out of the freaking, oh, I got I have Federal Reserve notes. Who cares where it comes from? It's money, you know? But the point of it is, is that why does it keep getting worth less and less and less and less? I mean, I saw oranges for $3.99 a pound. I said, you know, a six pack of, of angry orchard uh, apple cider vinegar is, or apple cider uh, beer is cost less than actual oranges. So what the hell is going on out here? Economically, we have to figure out where this money is coming from and who's really liable to pay it. They got to get paid in something, I guess. So if anybody has some any ideas about that, how that happened. Let me know, please. Well, I thought that the whole concept of HCR 192 was to provide us all the remedy to pay all the stuff. I don't think anybody's really mastered the process to figure out how to leverage that remedy. Am I wrong? Evidently. <laughs> Somebody's figured out how to, how, to, how to leverage that remedy? No, that's the point. You hear stories all the time, but show me the evidence. Well, there, there's been well, a... Under you know, I've had a couple of instances, a couple, a couple of fortunate medical bills are kind of easier. Um, I had a registration of my car that was settled that way. And, um, and that's it. One aren't, there some, bill, aren't there some rules or some maxims that say they can't do the kind of things that they did, for instance, with HDR 192 without providing remedy? Isn't that part of like the structure of it all? It's just that they can kind of, obfuscate the path to the remedy because maybe they don't want us to know about it? Well, I tell you, there's an interesting one right now. There's a, a court that's set up, the ICJ and the ICC, or I think IC something or other. Anyway, when you go look on their site, go look at the um, fees that they charge you. So in other words, it looks like that they might be offering some remedy. However, the remedy is out of reach for most of us. I think it was like 10,000. Oh, no, it was $1 million. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and they'll hold bankers accountable and everybody else but it's a um, um one million four hundred thousand euros something like that <laughs> well one of the things I, I think is very very curious is that so many times we are given an offer of through the through the uh document of a statement or an invoice or they uh, even the courts will say, well, uh, after you finish this trial or whatever, you have to pay us a thousand dollars, whatever. But they never send a bill, and this is the point. So many people are allured into paying a debt without ever receiving a bill and never asking for a bill. And of course, too, um, if we're going to make a claim, did we give a bill? And if we're declared to be employees of the government, well, where's my check? How come I've never been paid? Yeah, I we generally get statements, don't we? We generally get statements or invoices or something. But a statement is not a bill. Right, 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 right. I, I, I agree with you. I'm saying that's, I think that's actually what we're getting in the mail is a statement from the Absolutely. power. Absolutely. A statement from the internet company, cable company. Right. So one of these aspects of the sub, uh, of, uh, sub, uh, rogation, subrogation of uh, uh, evoking a right of subrogation is that um, we are supposed to be able to uh, set off the debt when we invoke that right. So setting off is part of that thing of where we discharge, but it's not discharge, it's set off. Into that was the, the remedy I was referring to. Yeah, into the future when there is some money and there's never going uh, to be any. Oh, I've got a question. I see, I see. Uh, okay, who has a question? Rob, Rob. Here. yeah. Hi, Ron. Um, you know, you brought up HJR 192, which also goes hand in hand with public policy. Um, it was all con a congressional act. So has anybody ever thought about taking Congress to court? Because they're, they're supposed to uh, uphold and enforce. Many times. <laughs> you know, I actually have a congressional report where, they're, where they are concerned that we, we may, I, I don't know, I, I can't say hold them liable, but they were a little afraid of the people. Wouldn't um, that be like challenging God metaphorically? <laughs> I mean, well, how much higher does it go than them? How would we take them? Well, one congressman was, one congressman, uh, Louis McFadden, 
he did challenge him, and I, I know they, they tried to kill him, and they, they just succeeded on the third attempt. But, um, you know, it, they've been getting out of hand since, since it's been written, and, and, and people like you guys have been awake. Uh, they want to put you back to sleep. Because they haven't, never this, they haven't taught this in the public uh, school, the, the so-called public school system, and they've been getting, you know, they've been getting away with it. So when we wake up and we bring this issue up, we're now considered sovereign citizens. Uh, yeah, and and that is something we really, you know, I think as a group we really need to start. We need we need to start thinking about how we're going to deal with that. Um, you know, in in the the UK, it's free man on the land or whatever, and it's almost thrown at you like there's something wrong. You know, technically, I see them as the sovereign citizen. Somebody else um, who's well, on. Well, Jackie, let's just talk let's about that a little bit. Harry, well, hold on a minute. Um, Harry, Harry Quinn got called a, a constitutionalist, which I think is hilarious, considering they're the ones that take the oath to the Constitution. <laughs> No, no, but I asked him what that meant. Yes, what does that mean exactly? What does it and mean? He, he said he didn't know. Yeah, he doesn't know. Well, what let's just be clear operating um, as if, you know, those of us that are know who we are, know what we're not, they're coming at us and saying that uh, you don't believe in the law of the land, et cetera, et cetera. When the reality is that they... Um, are coming out of a in this state in the state jurisdiction, which is DC. So they're telling us that we don't believe the law applies, uh, and they're trying to impose a jurisdiction of DC law and private rules and codes on us. Yeah, but so really, the the thing they're projecting is 180 degree opposite from what they believe. Yeah, but they're also, the ones that are operating outside of the law. Yeah, and they believe that that the law doesn't apply to them. They believe that they they that they have immunity. No, so, they're they're, fact, they're operating it under the codes. Yeah, and it's like uh, you know, if if the fiction's name is on the license, then the fiction is licensed, not me. And yes. if, once you've done the DL one forty two, then you've let go of any kind of agency or agent of the fiction. Uh, just to be clear on that, those rules and codes only apply in the District of Columbia. This is correct. And that's where the fiction right. lives. Yes. So every single state of state law enforcement policy enforcer only has jurisdiction in the District of Columbia. And they wanted to extend that, obviously outside of that, by using their tacit agreements adhesion contracts and bullshit. But they never have jurisdiction out there unless they can get us to contract. I think Thomas has something he wants to say. Hold on a minute. Uh, yes, Thomas? Uh, yes. Um, um, hmm. Well, there's so, been so much uh, talk chat here. Um, I'm invoking uh, Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act under 28 U.S.C. 1602 to 1611 with specific reference to 1607b the right of counterclaim and that my reliance is based upon the supreme court case in federal crop insurance versus merrill which basically states that anyone who enters into any agreement with the government takes the risk of having accurately ascertained that he who purports to work for government stays within the bounds of his authority um that's the first thing i wanted to put out the second thing I wanted to put out was um, the the presumption or the the, the fact that they paid for everything. Uh, everything's prepaid. Uh, there's a use of fruct use of fructory issue, a relationship with that. Um, I posted a couple things in here from I am some dude, and uh, I guess with that, I, I can't remember what the other question was. So I will yield. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Thomas. Okay, is that Jackie, if we finish with this, this subject, I just want to have a, a finish up on uh, the safety committee thing. Okay, shall I stop recording? So, because sometimes these recordings get really long. I have a comment I'd like to make. Okay, go ahead, Keith. I was having a conversation with Greg yesterday, um, and he said something to me, and I figured I don't know how many people subscribe to this. And I've been over the last 10 years that I've woken up to all this law stuff and all this system. You know, 
my perspective, it's amazing how quickly things can shift with the shift of perspective. My perspective has always been all this stuff they're doing to us and all the horrible shit they do. And we could all sit here and talk about how this system is completely ridiculous. But here's the thing. And I didn't see it when he said it and it took me a second for it to sink in, but then I saw it. We do this to ourselves. We consent. That's why you- every single solitary thing that we do that gets us involved in with uh, that gets their meat hooks into us. Our mom voluntarily, not maliciously or intentionally, but voluntarily signed the birth certificate. We submitted an application for the birth, for the social security card. We submitted an application license. for the driver's license in any other thing yes. that you've ever done. You request it whether you realize it or not. And it's, it's been done under the guise of we feel like we're obligated. We're, we're told to. So we're doing all of these things out of profound places of, of ignorance. I mean, it's almost obscene levels of ignorance that we as a population are living under with regards to how to even operate it on the very land that we were born in. So much so we're so ignorant to how to operate on the land that we're taken off the land and we don't know how to get back on it. It's this ignorance that they've capitalized on. And by, by way of we've become ignorant and then they've influenced us to believe that we need to do these things. So from a place of obscene ignorance, We've been volunteering and volunteering and volunteering. It's just, it took me a minute to wrap my mind around that. I'm like, no, they've been doing this to us. And then I had to stop for a second. And I'm like, you're absolutely right. We have absolutely signed up for every damn thing that they've done to us. So the trick is. Under I'm, their rule. Excuse me? Under their rule. When I was in high school, I couldn't get a job until I got a social card and a work permit and that Agreed. was via my high school counselor told me that well you're you're absolutely right i agree i i agree that once there's all these ways that we latch in and we don't even know it see that's the thing right no we it's public school it system stuff. you were in their school system for to begin with there you go and then the yeah, job we and the driver's license the thing we is though trained. all of these things that we did that latched us into the system we did when we were minors and there's, there's, these things have literally brought us into a system that will last for a lifetime if you don't understand what it is. And right. the, the full disclosure of the whole way the whole thing works wasn't presented. I mean, there's just so many flaws to how this right. thing works, but we did it to ourselves while ignorant. I just... I, so I, here's the thing on, on that subject. So you know one of these things that i look at we're looking at a corporation and a lot of people want to fight the idea that it's a corporation i think that it's time for us to love the idea that it's a corporation and so we say okay we accept the so-called corporate government as being whatever it is and then we create services that compete because if it's a corporation, I don't have to do business with Krispy Kremes, as Paul says. I can do business with Krusty Kremes <laughs> or any other cream that I want. So th this is the thing. So one of the things for IDP to do was to help facilitate people in coming together and creating alternative services, such as I think schooling is going to be the hardest thing um, for us to kind of deal with, but it's something we're going to have to think of and come up with at some point. But pretty much any other service could probably be dealt with. Even something like CPS. I mean, we're going to have to come up with alternative services um, that resonate at a higher frequency, ones that actually help us out and, and do what we need them to do and not uh, drag us into their system, you know, into their scheme of corruption. I find it very confusing to figure out how to even completely exist autonomously <laughs> as a community outside of their system because of what that man, I'm sorry, I forget his name, what his point was about what they've done. Without that social, you can't get the work. I mean, nowadays you can do it. That's, not, that's, nowadays not, strictly, that's not strictly true, though. Actually, huh? Harry Quinn works well without a, without a social now. Right. Well, I'm going to say nowadays there's things you can do with like the trusts and getting the numbers associated to that to work, but that's that's more sophisticated stuff than the average Joe knows about. I mean, I feel privileged to be part of this group to learn about this stuff because not everybody knows about that crap. 
we can live outside the system. You just have to be determined to do it. Um, I met a guy once, he says he never pays taxes of any kind, but he literally never buys anything. We try to do it with actually buying things and doing things, and it is a lot harder, but there are ways of doing it. Thomas. Uh, yes. Um, um, <laughs> what, sorry, I have I, 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 I very attentively, and I just I get off track. Now, one of the things that um, uh, some people in Texas and a couple of folks in Pennsylvania have been thrust into these issues regarding the um, automobiles and child protective services. Mm -hmm. um, what, two things that they did was they did the revocation of assumed presumed power of attorney. They, um, and then they also got uh, the certification only on the uh, child's birth certificate. Uh, in one instance, the CPS showed up for the third time and the uh, party basically said that um, I have title to this property right here. Your, your assumed presumed power of attorney has been revoked. I'm the attorney, in fact, I'm now asking you to leave and the people turned around and got in their cars and he hasn't heard another word. This was around mid-August. Okay, so, so here's, here's what I'm saying though, is more like we understand that whenever you form a contract or agreement with that particular party, any of their parties, what we're really doing is putting the, the superior court or one of their agencies, any of those agencies, any congressional agency as being the person who will settle any disputes that we have arising out of that contract. That's the real issue that we have. Well, that's one of the major things that we need to stop doing. We need to stop consenting in the first place. We need to stop giving them the power to solve our issues. And that's, and we, we need to start naming people within our communities. For instance, within IDP itself, we can say, okay, if we have disputes amongst us, we're going to have Paul. <laughs> settle our disputes or whoever you know we name at people that we know and that we trust and it's the same in our marriages and all the rest of it we need to start naming that party that solves no jackie you're wrong you need to pay me ten dollars <laughs> go ahead marcia <laughs> marcia you there i might have yeah so i forgot to unmute Okay. Uh, what, what we're ultimately talking about is we are becoming aware that we're standing with one foot in a private world and another foot in a public world. And that distinction for us has not occurred until this time. And what we're talking about is not standing, you know, we're, because we're there, we can't not stand in one world or stand in the other uh, and, and juggle back and forth. It just really isn't going to happen. What we, sovereignty is, is knowing who you are and where you're standing at the time. So you know whether to express yourself as your human, you, who you are, or to execute as the beneficiary of the fiction that's been created for your benefit. Absolutely. You, you just said so that like it was point. easy. Operating, What's that? You just said oh. that like it was easy and operating like that, that requires a level of knowledge that most of us, obviously we're striving to learn it, but I guess the point I'm trying to make is to look truly be able to effectively- your heart. There are 20 maxims of law that really apply when you understand that all of this that you're uncovering and discovering the, 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 the veil the, the the wool that's been over your eyes and i understand because i've been doing this i gave my deal one 142 in 1986 my last return for taxes was 1973 so i have been nose to nose up against the wall uh, living in the the what i'm speaking for a very long time and I, and I know where I, when I'm standing in the private and when I'm standing in the public, when a public offer is made to me, who I am in the matter, and I understand that you, but this is what you really are grappling with. You're in 
both worlds and the the what you're looking for is the mastery of who you are on both sides and all i'm suggesting is that That's to truly understand that and navigate in this system and understand that by the time we become adults so that we can effectively navigate they should teach us this stuff in school but they don't and then when you well of become, course they don't want to because then well, hold on be, a second when you become a grown adult you've been through the system as it exists a few times and it's kind of become ingrained in you. It's a challenging thing to forget it to, and to relearn this whole new thing. And as I listened to what you said, which caused me to comment initially, you, it just rolled off your tongue like so easy. And it's like, damn, it's going to take most of us that level of time that you've put in to truly become that masterful yeah. with some of this stuff, because we have to make it a part of us. Well, and, really it doesn't. Yeah. It, it, listening like, and, oh, and and coming, coming, your your openness to hear what's going on, your passion about the the bitterness and grief and the, of the deception, and and uh, uh, yes, we we can clear this quickly and get to because sovereignty is not some place you get to. You're already there, and what you're discovering is that you don't know your how to be there. You don't know how to be there or to project from there. Precisely. And all of this out there stuff is is confusing because that's what's kept you trapped. You just said so something the, perfect. The mastery no how to project from being there. being the sovereign. You know, when somebody comes and says, you know, who are you and, and where's your identification? And, well, who's asking? <laughs> and the diplomacy of finding out what side I am somebody that's coming to talk to me privately, or is it somebody making a public offer? Uh, you know, you really can accelerate. You're in there. The, we've done a lot, a lot, a lot of hard work in the last 30 years to be able to even have you guys thinking it's so exciting to hear your your passion and th that you're at this level of ha having a conversation, because now you're you're teachable. Yes. May I ask, interject just a few quick things? Marsha, would you please call me when, and or text me your number so I may call you? Uh, this is Roxy once again, 949-878-7100. But I need anybody to call me because I do need help. I have been in this about 30 years when my children were taken from me. And I need people to call me now who are willing just to be a friend, who are willing to share information if they've done anything, and who may be willing to have my help and I help them. Happy to create exchanges that are win-win. I filed basically a small claims court against the Huntington Beach Police Chief, Robert Handy. <laughs> I was called today. Uh, he's been, um, what he called, served a Friday, and he had uh, his sergeant call me, who I think is from a legal department, and I mentioned that, uh, you know, are you calling me regarding Robert Handy's case? He said, yes. I said, well, it's small claims, and there's, there is no, um, you know, there is no legal representation for either party. It's between us. So uh, ask him to contact me if he chooses to settle out of court. Anyway, I had more stolen uh, car things, every most of my valuables in my life, and they were refused to be given back to me. The police stole them and only gave back my workout clothes. So I've had over $100,000 worth of items from gemstones, film scripts, et cetera, et cetera, uh, all stolen from me. I have been striving to get back on my feet, and I really do need some people that are willing to befriend me as I was a philanthropist before this all happened, before my daughter and his son and I had brain injury on four sides. And we've spent uh, years to be able to speak and comprehend English again, about seven. And then I spent four years to be able to walk without a lot of pain. So my thought is that I'm really striving <clears throat> to find people that would, you know, be willing. Uh, as a philanthropist, I've taken 14 people into my home without asking for anything ever in return and gave them everything they needed for one or two or three years. And I just don't <clears throat> uh, get how... You know, we need to, it sounds like to me from this call and other calls and, and a meeting I went to, I think you guys are great people. I believe we need to have more organization. I believe it needs to be, I'm trying to say my goal is to make sure that those who have succeeded in one or more steps of the private status, let's write that process up. I'll do it with you because I need to go through those. I need the particular steps because I've been striving for years to save my daughter and my son, and I don't have any help to 
you know, with all the things I'm doing and I'm trying to save my life. After my car and every, and my belongings and money were stolen, I lived on the streets for two years sleeping. I will not survive it again. I need someone that really cares or a bunch of you that really care enough to say, hey, this is how you create this private status or that. Pri and let's get it out to everybody because, and even the information you're talking about, uh, Marsha, 30 years ago, my children were taken from me because I stood up when my daughter was put in this supply closet and the principal said I was overreacting because I was upset that the teacher did that and locked her in there for the rest of the school day, even if it was only two or three hours, not never should have happened. So my children were taken away from me. I fought for two years, no one helping, lost all my business, I uh, lost all my income, uh, my, my, I lost everything then as well. Roxy, and, um, Roxy, you've given her your number. Yep. If she can, she'll call, okay? But let, let's well, no one has called me before, and I just I would love for someone to say yes. I'd be happy to call you. That would be willing to befriend me. But I have asked before, you know, to try to connect with all of you, and no one no one contacts me, I and I don't get that. I guess everyone I guess is I've, struggling to find their way, and so I think that's. But we need to unite to find that way. The only well, way we'll be able to be successful is if we come together and we all do it. If if you like Jackie, I've contacted you and. You were going to send me a list of like the steps to go through the private status. I'll write them up. Just so he, work with me. I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, I'll then get get it out to anybody that wants it. Let's get organized and let's make this happen. I've yeah. been trying for three years that, since I found your group. And I just want to help and to work as teams. And we can have someone that mentors someone going through a step. And then that person can mentor somebody else. And everybody can keep mentoring until everybody is private status. And everybody recognizes that we are sovereigns. We're never citizens, we're sovereigns. But what does that mean? And we have to really look at that too because there's so many different places. There's so many different definitions. So do we even say we're sovereign? Because yes, I was called a sovereign citizen by a police officer. And that's my other court case is I was in solitary confinement okay, Roxy, because they called me Roxy, sovereign citizen. Roxy, that, that's, that's fine. You can, you can mute me again, Jackie, okay. go ahead. Okay, all right. So Bob, you have your hand up. Uh, I think her name's Moxie with an M and, um, you know, we've all been searching for others to be with us, you know, and hey, I'll reach out to her. Um, yeah, I'll be part of the group and I could use a paralegal too. I mean, if she's good at secretary kind of stuff, I have a lot of um, theories and stuff. You know, I've listened to Carl Lentz and stuff. I've been in this group uh, movement for 40 years. I started way back when um, I used to pay all my guys with postal money orders. Um, and the guy that was my accountant drove around with no license, no plate, no tags, stuttered so bad you could barely understand him. And um, he won his court cases every time, 40 years ago. Wow, that's interesting. 40, I've heard you guys say 30, 10, 15, whatever. Yeah. So she's right. We do need to organize everybody. It's hard. Yeah. You know, there's veterans groups. There's a bunch of calls I'm on. I know you're on a bunch of calls. Um, so sounds like she needs a friend. Where is she at? Do you know, Moxie, where are you? Roxy. She's down in California. Really? Yes. Ma Marlin Spike? No, Mo there is not somebody else called Moxie. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, to not get confused, that, that's Roxy. All right. All right. That's what I had written down, but then somebody commented on, commented on my beard. It looked like Moxie. Yes, Moxie. That, okay. That's Moxie. Different. Where is Roxy? Do you know? Roxy, where are you? Roxy, where are you? Did You're you unmuted. Where are you? It looks like she got off the call. Well, she's. I can. Oh, really? I have her number. Okay, she's she's down here in California. Okay, I have family too, close to you there, uh, Riverside Inland Empire. Is that where you're at, Riverside yes. area? Inland Inland Empire. Yes. That's where my mom. I'm in Colorado Springs. Okay. So is my friend Idiote, and we, we got together through these calls, you know. Roxy mentioned Huntington Beach. 
Yes, she did mention Huntington Beach. Oh, I love Huntington Beach. I grew up down at the beach. I grew up in, in um, I was born in Torrance, raised in Carson. Oh, did I say born? I mean created in, in Carson. I mean Torrance. You know where I'm at, right? I, I, we know Carson. I know Torrance. Long Beach. Yes. Uh, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions, comments? Well, I think one of the things that we have to all embrace right from the get-go is that we have to proceed in every day of realizing that everything's about contracts. Even our relationship we have here on this talk, we have a contract with each other implied that we're going to be, treat people with some form of consideration, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But when we go out there in this world, even if I go to work, uh, you, even if you just get go to a stop sign, you're in a contract right there with your car that says, I'm going to stop. But my contract says, if there's not a car in 50 yards of either direction and there's no cars coming, I'm going to go because there's nobody to have a contract with. So. Well, well, here's the thing, you know, I get asked a lot about paperwork and, and, and the likes. The whole thing here is to stop contracting. Um, you know, once you've rescinded all of the contracts that you're already in, um, yeah. just be very careful with the ones that you form thereafter. That's really what it's about. It's about of getting out of the ones that you're in. It's not about doing a bunch of different paperwork. Right. So, um, canceling contracts. So I think many people in California have done what they would term the DL-142. I did not do mine like that. I did mine more like the in-power um, liability um, thing. I did, I did a whole administrative process. Um, people get out of these contracts in different ways. Um, I don't know in other states what you guys do, but some, you'd have to check in your state to see if you have something equivalent to a DL-142, which is to cancel the driver's license. Um, Cancelling registration, that's a whole different thing. And, and then you have to remember that once you have these accounts, they technically, they're never, they, they never end. They don't actually terminate. Um, they're just closed or um, not used anymore. So um, anybody else got any questions or points? All right, I'm gonna stop recording. I think Paul wants to talk about uh, I'm just gonna mention something quickly. Um, I won't get into it deeply here, and it's not gonna be for everybody, but um, just a quick historical point here. Back before the War of Independence. Paul, Paul, should this be on the yes. record? On the, okay, because you know what? Just before you get into that then, anybody who is out of the system that is interested in sitting on a grand jury of some sort or in a safety committee should contact Paul. <laughs> no, should contact us at info at internallydisplacedpeople.com. No, dot org. Right, Paul? Well, not for the safety committee. Anyone can do that. That's not necessary because that's really about getting people in our communities to start unlearning, re-educating. So okay. if you want do, me to go on now, I will. Well, I do want, yeah, we do need people that are, are technically out of the system as such, people that don't have driver's license. That's license. the grand juries. That's yeah, the grand we, juries. we really need some help from people to do that. We need to have at least 35 people. I mean, I'm sure we could find 35 people who aren't in the system somewhere. We have, we have a couple. <laughs> so if you are out of the system, um, pretty much, then, um, you know, we'd appreciate some assistance. So you do that by contacting info at internallydisplacedpeople.org. Okay, go ahead now, Paul. All right, just quickly, um, in the lead up to the um, War of Independence, the people started to form what they called safety committees and observation committees. And what these, what these guys did is they fly a little flag locally. When they saw that flag flying, the people would come together for a little meeting in the end of the day. And they'd discuss the issues going on, if there were grievances or usurpations by the uh, local Crown authorities, they discussed those. And these, these safety committees organized across, across the Union States 
or across the states. And um, it was that organization that led to the further uprising, an organization that you know, enabled what happened after to follow. What we want to do is start to widen our circles uh, and start um, trying to um, uh, awaken people in our communities. And what we want to do is just throw out these issues that we've all investigated that started us down this rabbit hole. So things like 911, chemtrails, whatever. Well, what we want to say to people is, look, there's some things going on here that we think are of serious uh, importance and implications to our communities. And we would like to find some people that are willing to come together, you know, once every month for a couple of hours to sit down with people in their community and, um, and start looking at these issues. We're not going to tell them, well, we're, we're not going to ask these people, we're not going to give all the answers to the people up front. We want them to come to their own conclusions. So we know when they start investigating these things, we know where they're going to end up. Uh, so anyway, the purpose of this is to try and start building um, community within our communities around the, situ the, you know, the topics that uh, are extremely important that people start understanding. So in a nutshell, that's it. There's a, a left-hand menu on the website, which will start expanding on this, and I'm going to start promoting it widely. But uh, in a nutshell, that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to call these things safety committees, and we're going to try and get people in across our communities to start organizing and come together and start looking at a list of topics. Thanks, Jackie. All right, then. Okay, is there anything else? Um, I won't be here next week. If you guys want to use the room, you can. It would be the same number. So um, if you guys want to chat or whatever not, then you just come up to this number and hope that there's somebody else up there or you can arrange to meet people up here. No, not a big deal. But I, I won't be, I'll be out the state. So I fly tomorrow. Um, um, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, is there a uh, replay number for this call? Yes, um, that will be listed on the, um, I'll send that out. It's. Well, usually what happens, I don't know where Greg or if Greg's okay or whatever not. Um, so yeah, I will list the, um, where the download can be done um, on Facebook. So you'll have that. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome.